All right, hello and welcome to Meet the Queens. Yes, where you get to learn all about drag from some of my favorite queens. They do drag, we do drag, we all do drag. And today I have the fabulous Ms. Rianne Balsley here. Hey, Ms. Rianne, how are we doing today? I'm great. How are you, Buff? Thanks for having me. You know, just sitting here, drag queen in drag. Just in the library. Just chilling in the library. <laughs> in, in the library. We've been reading a little bit, getting up on my knowledge of all the yeah. queens. I love it. Thank you. So, Rian, tell us, where do you live? What's your story? What's you all about? Yeah, so um, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina at the moment. Um, I started drag in 2004, um, 2005, 2005. Um, and I was fortunate to learn how to do drag um, and the art of entertaining uh, in Richmond, Virginia at Godfrey's, as well as up in DC at Freddy's Beach Bar. Um, the ladies there really took me under their wings and taught me how to be more than uh, more than I thought I could be. And so it's been a really fun 15 years of like figuring out what this is and what this looks like. And um, I think what I really love is that I got to take things from the DC scene, which was a little more character based, a little more um, development of who you are as a performer and like what your drag brings. Uh, and then bringing some of the Richmond stuff, which is very rooted in what we think of as classic Southern drag of, you know, back pieces and harsh contouring and all of those kinds of things. Um, so I'm really fortunate that I got to take both of these worlds and create what, what my drag is right now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really lucky that I got to do that. I also had the chance to, I lived in Orlando for a few years um, and I got to see some drag that I was not that didn't speak to me or relate to me. So it was nice to be able to say, okay, this is not how I want to present my drag or the style of drag that I'm interested in. So yeah. I think I think all three of those locations really have helped create what I am right now. I love it. Well, where did the name Rianne Balsley come from? So um, my first job ever, I was a, a bus boy at a restaurant and it was a rainy day. And we were playing like, you know, the porn star name game and the soap opera name game. And I came up with this game of like, let's make drag queen name games. So you have to take the first letter of your, of your, nor, of your real name. So my real name's Ryan. Um, so you have to take, so that's where the R and Rianne came from. And then your last name had to be something sexual and that's where the balls came from. Um, so Rianne Ballsley just became this, this name that um, works for me because it's like a, kind of like a real girl name, <laughs> but also very tongue in cheek. I did miss a massive opportunity though, but my mom's name, like her maiden name is Polly Cox. And I really like, <laughs> I missed an opportunity. So. I love it. I love it. Here we have a picture of you on top of a bar. I, I assume this is how you like to work. This is exactly how I love to work. So this actually is from Hardywood, uh, which is one of the breweries in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and Hardywood was one of the first breweries actually in the country that partnered with a local uh, pride, pride organization to brew beer for that event in our community. So um, Hardywood created this really delicious Hefeweizen that was um, called Tropic Like It's Hot, and it was really good. It was a perfect summer pride beer. Uh, and so for the kickoff event, we all showed up in drag and we mingled with folks and did some numbers. And um, what was really great is I got to donate $300 of tips that day to Virginia Pride to help make the event bigger and better. So. I love that. You know, anytime I can get on top of a bar, I'm excited. <laughs> Absolutely. I love getting on a bar because I think the other thing too is guests or like your your fans don't always get to see you do that sometimes. So it's fun, especially like this this brewery is a massive warehouse, right? So even if I'm walking the floor, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get lost a little bit. You can't miss a queen on a bar though, you know? <laughs> no, you can't. You look beautiful. And I, I love the fact that you seem I mean, you have a commitment to do good and to give back to charity too. It's really important to me. I think, you know, I think about our sisters who started drag, right? Drag started in America in the way we know it now to be to be about the community, right? We were the ones who threw the first bricks. We were the ones who took care of our community. And I think it's our job as queens to use our voices, whether that's our using our voices like we are right now or on social media or being present. It's important for me to to be um, to be a connection for folks. Uh, to to a community they might not know, right? This this audience at Hardywood, for instance, there was it was a mix of gay and straight, right? There were folks who had no clue that there was a drag show happening 
but they enjoyed themselves just as much. And I was able to have conversation with them and talk about what pride means and talk about how they can connect and support and be an ally. And I think that that's really important. Oh no, that's beautifully said. I mean, one of the things I love when I first met you, cause I felt like I discovered you, like you've always been there, but all of a sudden I'm like, wow, this Rianne. And, and then you started uh, performing with us at my drag brunch. And one thing after another, I'm like, you're witty, you're smart, you've got it all together. I mean, I was just floored. I'm like, where did she come from? She's been here this whole time. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I appreciate you bringing me into the fold, right? I think I, I've been doing drag, like I said, for 15 years and I have a hard time. I'm old, right? Like I'm an old woman. I don't like getting in face and like going to a bar and mingling with queens to like, try to get bookings and all of those things. I also have a hard time too, I think because Rianne is much more of a character, right? And I think you've, you've experienced that. My wittiness, I love to grab a microphone and host. I love to make mm -hmm. people um, be in on the joke. And I think that's really important. We have some sisters who do beautiful drag, but are not in on the joke. <laughs> and- Yeah, you know, I, here in my library, if I have to read a little bit, I get upset or frustrated, I don't know. I don't. It's, it is what it is, but there's a lot of girls who are amazing dancers, uh, performers. You know, I, I, I think that's important, right? I'm not one of those people, I'm not a great dancer, right? But I do feel that there is an art to hosting and producing a show and the rhythm of a show. And some girls will just get up and chat, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, that's not host, like hosting is just not talking on a microphone. Correct. The other thing too, is there's some girls who, when they're hosting, they think it's about them, right? Hosting isn't about you as a queen. It's not about you on the microphone. It's making sure that all of your guests are having the best time possible, mm -hmm. not only so that they want to come back, but when you let them, again, when you're having fun with them or you're joking with them or right, when they get to be in on the joke with you, everyone else is going to make more money too, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's been the biggest shift, I think, as I've learned more about digital drag and what we're doing here today is like, how can you interact with the audience and engage with them? Uh, you know, last uh, uh, you were part of a show, Corn Queens, right? Yeah. Um, you've been part of a couple of them, I think now, right? Yeah, um, I've been. I actually have a clip of that um, and then we'll talk about it. OK, let me show okay. the clip of you and Corn Queens. All right. Y'all right. enjoy this. Miss Rianne Balsley. Hey now, you're a rock star, get the show on, get paid All that glitters is gold, only shooting stars break the mold It's a cool place, and it only gets colder You're bundled up now, wait until you get older But the media man begs to differ, judging by the hole in the satellite picture The ice we skate all right, that's Ms. Rianne Balsley from one of the Corn Queen show, which you can find online at allbuff.tv. Go check it out. What'd you think, Ms. Rianne? What'd you think of that performance? You know, I, like we were talking about, your, the way that you've let us as queens represent ourselves with these digital shows is really fantastic. I think for me, I get the chance to do um, some numbers that I might not do at a bar, right? I think that a smart queen knows how she's gonna make money, right? I'm gonna do a top 40 song, I'm gonna do a fun costume, I'm gonna dance, all of those things. I love doing postmodern jukebox music. That actually was a postmodern jukebox song, uh, you know, their cover of All Star. And I love that, I love that song. I don't know if I could perform that at a bar. I don't know if I could perform that, you know, for folks because I don't know if they would get it. But I get to do it when folks are sitting at home in their living room. <laughs> Yeah, that's been one of the adaptations with digital drag in general. And and I, until the whole quarantine happened, you know, I, I didn't much, I don't like to see myself on video, much less do video. And so it's been, it's been a real challenge to become comfortable with seeing yourself in that manner. Um, I've also, I have to keep reminding myself like where the camera is sometimes when I record. Um, you know, I, we do our makeup to be right here sometimes. And so if the camera is like, three inches too short. I'm like, where did that come from? I didn't paint that properly. <laughs> right. No, I hear you. I'm actually adjusting my monitor as we speak because <laughs> I'm looking at the little box over here and people are like, why does she keep looking down at the left side? Uh, but no, you're exactly right. Um, I'm kind of curious, uh, how has your drag kind of changed over the years? Because it's been 15 years, you said. Yeah. Like, how did it start? How did it change? Yeah, so the first time I did drag was actually um, at King's Dominion, um, which is a theme park outside of Richmond, and I was asked to host our entertainment talent show. And I, they, I asked if I could do it in drag, and my boss was like, yeah, of course, what's the issue? 
I had no plans. Like I borrowed a friend's homecoming dress. I tied a white button up shirt like around my waist. And one of the girls in the entertainment department was like, I just took a theater makeup class. I know how to do drag makeup. And she didn't, <laughs> fun fact. She put some eyeliner on me and gave me like blush circles. It was like, you look stunning. Um, so I take that as this moment of, um, you know, I'm, I'm aware that I didn't look good, right? I don't think any of us looked good when we started. Um, and I've been able to grow. My makeup specifically has grown. And I think that I do some things that are perhaps a little bit different than some of the other girls. I think that, you know, I don't get rid of my entire eyebrow. I only get rid of half of it when I paint it on so that I have some shape to work with and some, some depth that's already there. Um, but I also have a really fabulous group of sisters, especially in Richmond and here in Charlotte too, who have always given me tips and tricks and it's never um, personal, right? It's not, I say this quote all the time from Drag Race, but like, it's not personal, it's just drag. And I have to remind myself of that, especially like Kristen Collins, for instance, is a, is a brilliant makeup artist. If she gives me a tip, I would be an idiot to think that she's trying to read me or trying to be rude. You know what I mean? Like that's not what any of us are doing to support each other. When it comes yeah. to costumes, you know, I used to like go to Target and get leggings and like try to look like a real edgy girl. And then I realized that my body's not built like that, especially as I've gotten older and my metabolism's caught up with me, which really sucks. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I used to not wear hips. I used to not wear girdles. I used to, I used to be able to like look fishy, but I don't even like that term. I don't like that concept of, uh, of that. So, I mean, again, I, I'm a clown and I know that <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Um, I love, get, I love finding new and interesting costumes. I love, um, borrowing costumes from folks and seeing what works on me and what doesn't. I think that's the other thing too, is some queens get very uh, protective of their things, which they should be, right? Absolutely. But I'm absolutely not, if I'm, someone's got a costume that I like or a, a wig that I like or a pigment that works really beautifully in their skin, I'm gonna ask where those came from and I'm gonna see if like they can connect me or help me get those things, so. Yeah, no, I, I've always enjoyed your look. I, it kind of has a kind of a postmodern feel to it. Um, it's very campy, um, and you know, you know, obviously there's a difference between drag and cis women or trans women, right? Like right. drag is entertainment, it's creative, it's, it's trying to be over the top. And I think a lot of drag culture or a lot of media or some of the fans out there gets drag confused with trying to pass or trying to be a woman. And, you know, and so that's a challenge. I mean, look at these pictures right here. I mean, they are fabulous, y'all. Um, I love it. You're giving me very much love boat vibes with this whole look here in the blue. Um, yeah, so what, I mean, that's, what was that for? So I actually wrote a one woman show um, that I performed. Uh, so as a boy, I work in the entertainment and hospitality industry and I worked on cruise ships for about five years. So I wrote a show about my time on ships called a total ship show. Um, and I got the chance to perform it. I've performed it in Richmond a few times. I've performed it in Orlando um, last year. So this is my ship show look. It's my cute little captain outfit. And I, you're right, I think that I've really taken, I love the glamor of 1930s and 40s and even the 50s, right? The women were so stylized in such a stunning way. I think that's part of the reason that I, I look to them to guide my fashion and to guide the way that I dress. Um, you know, same with the picture that's on the other side that's in that teal gown. That was, um, I used to manage a restaurant and that was our big award ceremony that the food industry had. And so I got to show up in this gorgeous evening gown and like walk around this theater that was built in the 1920s, please. Ab I'm absolutely having a photo shoot. So, um, and then I in the middle, that. actually. Go ahead. What's the one in the middle? Um, what is so that about, is it Elvis? Yeah, so it's an Elvis costume that I actually helped create when I worked at King's Dominion. Um, I have a really fun Elvis medley I like to do that's um, Waking Up in Vegas by Katy Perry into Cher's cover of uh, Walking in Memphis. Um, but this picture was actually taken at Pulse. So when I lived in Orlando, I got to be part of the community at Pulse. And this was my first show in Orlando. Um, and I carry it with me. Um, I carry that performance and, and my time there with me every day. I love that. You know, for our viewers, you are watching Meet the Queens. We are talking to Rianne Balsley, who is based in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Uh, Rianne, um, tell me a little bit more about what you do for your 24 seven job. Yeah, so outside of drag, I run entertainment at Carowinds, which is a theme park here in Charlotte. Um, I'm really fortunate that I get to be creative with, with my teams and I'm fortunate that I get to tell stories for folks to enjoy when they come to the parks. 
Um, so, you know, we produce over the top and immersive experiences. Like for Christmas, we have an event called Winterfest that is the entire park is covered in 5 million lights and I have 12 shows. And in 2019, we included a parade. Um, that my work helps guide a lot of my drag as well. Um, whether that's because I'm working with choreographers or whether that's because I'm finding new costumes that I want for myself and then I go buy them myself, or <laughs> whether that means that I'm able to like test some wigs and have my have my hair and makeup team play with wigs. And you know, if I like what they did, I'll pay them on the, I take care of it and I'm like, I need you to make me the same thing. So um, I'm really fortunate that my, my day job is also, my day job and Rianne both let me provide fantasy to people and I'm, I love that about it. No, I love that too. And Carowinds is such a great, a great theme park and you, I mean, having you there, knowing you, um, and it's just amazing. I, I truly love that. And I think that's, that shows in your drag too. I mean, you obviously are an entertainer, you know about entertainment, you know how to make people happy and, and to give them joy. And I think obviously it shows. Um, let me show you another few looks that you, you have here that I found. Um, here we go, a little Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know, some <laughs> sort of action there, Pirate. Yeah, so um, in Richmond, I was able to host um, a really fabulous monthly bingo with my drag sister at a Mexican restaurant. The Mexican <laughs> restaurant was called Flora. It was great, right? It was it was all great Mexican food. And so we had holy guacamole bingo once a month. And every month had a theme. So that was our Halloween party where um, I was a pirate. And Natasha found um, this really ridiculous dress from Target that was just covered in spiders. And that's all she wore. And so, again, it's this... I think when people are in on the joke, I think when queens are in on the joke, things like this are okay. Things like this are fun and allow your allow the folks who are with you to 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 be with you. Like I also that day had a my eye makeup was horrible on the left side, which is why I have that eye patch on. <laughs> your makeup and, is terrible. <laughs> that's what I felt, and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. You ever have those days where you're like, I can't. What am I doing? I don't. What color is this? I I've, I've never done this before. So I just put an eye patch on and glued a glued a stack of lashes onto it. Um, just so that I, I looked like a fancy lady. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I think the looks lots of fun. Uh, it gives me Pirates of the Caribbean for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I really love that. And holy guacamole bingo. I think that's yeah. fun. People that got to win fun. buckets of guacamole. Like if you won, you won a bucket of guacamole. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one of the things I love about drag, about drag queens is we can, we can take, you know, a green screen and, you know, we can put anything in front of it. We can you know, entertain with just, you know, an, an old wig and some pearls. And, you know, I think art and drag is just, it, it's amazing. And what, what this quarantine, you know, obviously we're, um, you know, we're in the middle of this, um, you know, has shown us is that drag can't be stopped, right? Just like, you know, during whether it be Stonewall or, you know, throughout the history of AIDS and HIV, you know, it brought back so much love and joy and uh, compassion uh, to our community. And, and I think that's what the quarantine's doing right now is like, there's this evolution of virtual drag and it's bringing and it's showing that we can still entertain from our computer screens. Absolutely. And I think you're right. I think that our job as Queens is to entertain. I think our job is to provide release and fantasy for folks us when they need it the most, right? There are, there are so many times that when we're doing a brunch and you run into a, a woman with, who's there with all of her girlfriends and they're celebrating a bachelorette party or there's you know i don't know how many times you've had this happen but i can't even count that there's you know a meet and greet after the show and someone comes up and says today was my first day of chemo and i really needed this or today was my last day of chemo and i really needed to celebrate and i take great um that is that is a high pressure job <laughs> to create those moments and to give people that that release and to give people uh that safe place to be open and celebratory or mourn or, you know, whatever they need to do. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, I'm just curious. So for Rianne Bosley, what is the future? Like, what do you want to do with your drag? What's your, your next big thing? You know, I, for me, because drag is such a hobby, I don't necessarily have those sorts of um, milestones, right? There are so many fabulous girls who this is their full-time job, or this is the way in which they make their money, or this is the way that they uh, guide themselves. I love that I get to join you every few weeks at brunch. I love that I get to um, work with you. And, you know, I think for me, that's really what it is. I don't necessarily have a next step or a future moment. 
I am inspired very much by the Entertainer of the Year pageantry system. I think that it's very exciting. And I think that if I was to go into pageantry, I think that's the style that would be the best fit for me. Um, But I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. I think that I know what I'm good at. And I'm really good at grabbing a microphone (laughs) and having fun with people. Uh, I know I'm good at wearing a short little 1930s finger wave. (laughs) And I know I'm good at like having fun. um, And I'm okay with that right now. Yeah, no, I think you are amazing on a microphone and you're an amazing entertainer. I always enjoy, um, and you know, my husband Tommy uh, at the brunch always enjoys your performances and the creativity you bring. Um, you. <laughs> no, and I don't think everyone has to have like a big plan like RuPaul's Drag Race or a pageant. I mean, drag is about, you know, who you are. And sometimes that means just having joy in the day to day, the the brunches, the shows. Um, you know, I think there's so much in our community um, in Charlotte um, that, you know, there's fundraisers and charity, so much to give back to. Are there certain charities or things that you care about? Um, I am very passionate about LGBT youth, period. I'm very passionate about that. Um, I love the idea of being able to support those kids and give them a safe place. And um, I grew up in a very small country town in Virginia called Goochland. And I didn't necessarily have, um, didn't have any gays to look up to. So I do enjoy being able to connect with those kids. Mm. Uh, Time Out Youth, I think does really beautiful work. And I think that they unfortunately haven't been able to connect with them in the way that I want to. Um, but in Richmond, for instance, Rosemead, which is now called Side by Side is a similar organization. And I love being part of their proms and I love being part of their fundraisers. And I love, I love being able to give my energy to people who are doing more than what I can do by myself. Oh, that's so, so beautiful. Um, so I'm curious, as we wrap up, y'all, we're doing Meet the Queens. This is Rianne Balsley. We got to see a little bit of her looks. Um, how would you describe, like, who is Rianne? I always say that she is your drunk aunt from 1934 who might have been a vaudeville star. <laughs> yes. Yes, I love a drunk aunt. That yeah. is great. <laughs> On my Facebook page, my, my little description is, um, dude in a dress, part-time magician, rejected Disney princess, mediocre theme park dancing. (laughs) (laughs) Those are wonderful. Um, Do you have one, two, three tips that you would tell folks who maybe want to put on a wig for the first time, do drag, like what would you tell them? Do it, just do it, right? This is, I, we get to play dress up for a living when we do this and that is a really exciting thing. I think the other thing too is it's really important to listen to your elders uh, and listen to the folks who have done this, who have who've done this before you and who have done this before RuPaul's Drag Race. I love, love RuPaul's Drag Race. I think that it's brought our community and our art to a much wider audience, right? It is okay for a straight dude to like go to brunch and like feel comfortable there. 15 years ago, that might not have been the case, right? It, he was dragged along with his with his wife and all those things he felt uncomfortable, but now it's okay to enjoy those things. I think RuPaul's Drag Race has also changed the way that um, people think drag has to look. Uh, the way that queens have to present themselves, the way that makeup is supposed to look, the way that wigs are supposed to look, um, which is great. But I look at like the first season of RuPaul's Drag Race and like that to <laughs> me feels more, more of the drag that I'm used to, right? More of the more of the heart of drag. Um, so those are my tips, honestly. Put a wig on if you want to, put some lipstick on. There's gonna be plenty of queens who have YouTube videos of how to put on an eye or how to do makeup. But those queens have also been doing it for a long time. And so like, yeah, it looks real easy that they're just like blending their black into a hot pink, but like paint by numbers first, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Paint by numbers and just do it. Yes. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good, good piece of advice, whether it's a Friday, Saturday night, or whether it's doing drag, just do it. Just do it, right. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, this is the fabulous Miss Rianne Balsley. How do we learn about you? If we want to learn a little bit more, are you on the Instagram, the Facebook, the MySpace? Yes, yeah, so, so I'm on the Instagram at R Balsley, uh, and I'm mm-hmm, and I'm on Facebook as well at Rianne dot Balsley. Rianne dot Balsley. Dot. Yeah, I had that for some reason. I had to have a period. I don't know why. <laughs> I love it. Well, we love you, girl. It's so wonderful to have you here on Meet the Queens. Thank All you right. so much for having me, Buff. I appreciate it. I love you. Y'all, that is the fabulous Miss Rianne Bosley here on Meet the Queens. Y'all, please take time to subscribe to our channel at All Buff. That's A-L-L-B-U-F-F. 
TV and tune in for some more Meet the Queens. Mwah! Until next time, you do drag, I do drag, we all do drag. Thank you.